Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. I'm waiting for your more part more participants. Okay, sir. Sir, आज के meeting तक की सर बीरी रेंट थे के ना सर sorry बीरी रेंट थे के अमी शुजोक पाई नहीं कारण होते हैं जो already slot fill up होए गए थे so oh अच्छा sir अमी जुमे चोले आज तो इसे अमी try करे चिलाम तीन टा थे के आठ टा थे के किंतु कोनो slot ही खाली नहीं so oh वहाँ देखता पाई so, I'm just a good one. Half an hour in the complete good there. Key, okay, sir.
sir i think we can start now sir so welcome to to my presentation uh, thank you all of you for joining me because at first we set up a different time and then due to some unavoidable situation in at the institute we had a meeting today academic committee meeting so i had to go there uh, sorry for the inconvenience what we wanted to uh, discuss today in most uh, in this lecture we were discussing in the last class we were discussing about the about different types of greenhouse gases and i do say greenhouse gases because it has some impact on the uh, on our uh, climate change but we did actually discuss these things under the atmospheric conditions and most of the atmospheric gases uh, we divided it permanent and variable gases and we are discussing about variable gases and among them in the last class we are discussing about uh, water vapor and then we are also discussing uh, about carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide which we are discussing in that cases um, uh, we discussed few of the sources of carbon dioxide and some of this some of the areas where the carbon dioxide can also be accumulated or sequestered uh, in different uh, segments of the environment. So here is the figure. We discussed this thing that carbon dioxide are coming from a variety of sources. For example, the carbon dioxide is coming from the um, from the breathing breathing system from the human and animals, and that uh, uh, certainly mixed into the air. Uh, they are also coming from the um, uh, different soil decaying process respiration burning of uh, different fossil fuels and obviously these fossil fuels are one of the major sources of nowadays of carbon dioxide and although there are some natural sources but we cannot actually change too much about the uh, process of natural changes in the carbon dioxide but uh, we can all, we, we also add a huge amount of the carbon dioxide through our artificial um, artificial uh, systems such as uh, industries, uh, different transportation system and many others. On the other hand, if you see the red colors in the figure, you can see the carbon dioxide also go back to the uh, to their sinks. Uh, and major sinks are our marine uh, oceanic environment. So these are the areas where uh, the ocean can also uh, take up a substantial amount of the carbon dioxide in their uh, some biochemical uh, reactions and they can easily take part inside the inside the carbon carbon content inside the uh, ocean on the other hand uh, during the photosynthesis uh, process uh, the vegetation or uh, the trees they can accumulate the carbon dioxide inside their body actually the carbon carbon from the carbon dioxide the oxygen has been released through some biochemical reaction and then the carbon is stored inside the body of the plants. This is the figure that we, we, can, uh, we can take in account for the carbon dioxide uh, cycle, carbon cycle. Now, uh, why we are thinking about much about this uh, process? Because we know the carbon dioxide has been increased so much during last couple of decades. Uh, actually in 1958, it was first measured in, at Mauna Loa uh, a observatory in observator observation center in Hawaii and they suggested that carbon dioxide has been uh, actually increasing in a great rate so that it can also trigger the climate change impacts so how can we know that how can you know that uh, the carbon dioxide has been increasing uh, because uh, from 19 uh, before 1958 uh, and uh, what was the condition maybe for before 2,200 years ago or 300 years ago? Was the carbon dioxide or the concentration of carbon dioxide was very high or low? How can you know that? So we need to understand and we need to have this information to uh, analyze the carbon dioxide is increasing or it is a natural phenomena. 
some scientists in the very first time they said that it is a natural phenomena and uh, it would be again uh, drop down after a certain conditions but research the rich researcher research shows that this is not happening actually sorry so research shows that during the last couple of thousand years the carbon dioxide uh, concentration uh, was uh, not uh, too much um, in a variable conditions so almost that is uh, nearly about 280 ppm if you see the blue color in this figure you can understand the carbon dioxide started from 1000 years back so now it is 2020 no so you can see this blue color they have been sharply increasing after 1900 or 19 uh, yes 19 after 1900 and uh, this uh, uh, this color uh, this red color uh, we can say that in 1958 or after 1950 we measured this carbon dioxide as a red color so so if there were no instruments how can we know this green uh, blue color lines uh, so in that case what we do we normally use the proxy indicators what do you mean by proxy indicators proxy indicators are some of the uh, some of the uh, other source of um, uh, other source of materials from where we can get the uh, proper understanding of the climate of uh, previous times this is we call proxy indicators proxy indicators can be ice cores proxy indicators can be fossil proxy indicators can be um, different sets of uh, different sets of uh, uh, art uh, in the cave proxy indicators can be some uh, carboniferous uh, systems uh, in the in the uh, okay someone is asking that how carbon dioxide is dissolving in the marine lake okay i will go there okay uh, thank you for your question uh, so uh, carbon dioxide concentration uh, inside the uh, inside these uh, proxy indicators that has been uh, that has been nicely uh, nicely observed through different processes so on such proxy indicators is ice cores so now uh, in the ice cores uh, how we can how we can know that uh, uh, what are the climatic condition at the previous times we know ice cores are the uh, materials which has been um, uh, uh, reserved its qualities and concentration for a long long time in the same way so maybe uh, uh, from one or two thousand years back or three thousand years back uh, the sheet of the ice which has been um, which has been found in the antarctica they have been covered up every time with a subsequent another sheet of ice and the, the base ice which um, uh, uh, which was at the last stage uh, in the in the core uh, they did not actually come up within these through all the thousand years in front of the earth so they were actually covered up with other sets of ice particles so think about when it was formed in the bubbles of the air they have been trapped within the ice within the ice cores and um, these ice sheets uh, have substantial knowledge about the uh, about the uh, oxygen or carbon dioxide uh, that means what are the concentration of the gaseous concentration at that time they have been stored in the bubbles who uh, bubbles means air which is trapped in that ice sheets so now if you if you can take up uh, with some uh, measurements if you can take up the ice cores from the uh, from that source which has not been melted up during this time so you can analyze it and you can understand what is the condition of the climate climate during the uh, during the deposition of this ice uh, from long long time ago so we take up the ice cores uh, from different years uh, maybe from 1000 years 500 years 600 years uh, so we take up that things and we can we can also know the age from the carbon um, uh, half life of the carbon or carbon 12 isotope we can also know the age of that particular ice cores and we can also understand the carbon dioxide concentration about that time so from that source we can understand that carbon dioxide of previous time from 1000 years ago it was uh, actually 280 plus and minus so if you see again this color line you can see 
in 1000 years, the carbon dioxide in 280, and it's a little bit increased and sometimes it go down and sometimes it, it has been increasing and about 1600, 1700, it goes a little bit down and again, not too much down because it is 270 and 280, maybe sometimes 280, uh, two and sometimes two uh, sixty eight like this. So with this carbon dioxide concentration, we can understand the carbon dioxide concentration has not been changed throughout the one thousand years before nineteen hundred. They have not. They were not. Um, they were not actually changed substantially. Uh, we can understand it through the uh, process of the I scores uh, I score analysis. On the other hand, in 1958, when in Hawaii, Mauna Loa, uh, the observation center has been established and we measured that, we found it has been, um, it has been increasing a huge amount of the carbon dioxide at a time. So from 1900, now 2020, so almost you can see it is almost near about 400, 390. And nowadays it has been nearly 400 and plus. So with this time period, during the last 100 years, you can see how sharply the graph has been increased here. So this is, that's why we are, uh, we are very much interested about the carbon dioxide concentration. And during this process, during this process, um, we are also thinking about the um, of why this carbon dioxide we need to take in care of. You can, you can also understand carbon dioxide levels uh, it has been increasing by about 0.4% annually. So some scientists now est uh, estimate that uh, within, within the end of this century, it might be go to 500 ppm. So if it is go to 500 ppm, then the line will be much more sharper than like this, okay? So it, it will be a straightly go to the top, very straightly, a steep slope will be created. And what would be the consequences? Why we are thinking about this? Because if the carbon dioxide has been increased, then atmospheric concentration of the carbon dioxide also make us to be more warm up. And we, can, we will find that at the end of this century, the temperature will be, uh, will be increasing about additional three degrees centigrade uh, throughout the world. And the negative consequences of global warming, we know that, so what will be happen? That is a di different discussion matter. We're going to discuss that things also. But three degree centigrade average condition is huge. Now, maybe your question is, oh, oh, what does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, it means three degree centigrade. This is the average conditions. Okay. Uh, so uh, average condition means uh, at the time of the uh, at the time of the uh, lower temperature and maximum temperature, these three degree averagely will be added uh, during the during the time of different uh, seasons so 3 degree centigrade is huge in particular some of the areas where where the uh, temperature is still high in condition uh, even not not even even those areas which is very much uh, in cool condition in that that particular areas also this uh, increasing of the temperature is very devastating because um, because some of the areas like Antarctica and uh, Arctic area, Greenland, Siberia, th these are the areas where we, we, we have these ice sheets which has not been melted up during last thousand and thousand years ago. So it, it, has, it has created some balance uh, from the ocean and the other areas. So if that has been melted up, then the consequences of the uh, uh, consequences of the melting of the ice sheets will be huge for the uh, for the most of the areas of the world. So that is another another things. And subsequently, there are different chemicals and um, biochemical reactions will be increased uh, due due to the higher temperature in different areas. Now, one of your classmate has asked me that how the carbon dioxide can be uh, dissolved in the in the ocean. Well, so carbon dioxide can be dissolved because there are some phytoplanktons and zooplanktons living in here. So phytoplanktons, what happened? They take the carbon dioxide uh, as their food materials. And then these phytoplanktons and zooplanktons both together, they, has been, uh, they have been uh, feeded up by different sorts of uh, marine, anim uh, mar marine animals. And these animals, they, they take up that things and with their 
um, with their uh, bones and with their shells, they have been stored the carbon content in, in, in their positions. And those carbon contents has been long, long time uh, deposited under, under the ocean. So, so again, the question is, uh, how long they will gonna store it, store uh, in there? Uh, it will be stored until the, uh, until the chemical reaction happen to break down again. So most of the cases it is still in a position that they are not uh, being break down. They are remaining in there for a long, long time. But it has also been a chance that if the global temperature has been increased, uh, will be increased in future, then the, uh, the, the oceanic, oceanic uh, components, they can also trigger the chemical reaction inside the ocean and they can again release. So if the oceanic uh, carbon dioxide has been released, which is much more 50 times more than the atmospheric car carbon dioxide concentration. So that will gonna create a huge amount of the disastrous uh, situation throughout the world. Uh, I don't know, yeah, yeah, does it sound good for you? Uh, can you understand uh, who asked me? Uh, Ashraful, Ashraful Imon, can you understand my, uh, did you get, get, yes, yes, thank you. You got, got the point. So, so they can be stored in there with the shell, with different type of um, uh, materials, with different types of mollusks and arthropods. Okay. Uh, so not only carbon dioxide uh, we, we are thinking about, but also other greenhouse gases. They are also been very much important in uh, in in case of a greenhouse impact or greenhouse gases impact. Some of the gases are methane nitrous oxide and chlorofluorocarbons. And all these gases also been included in the variable gases. Although their concentration is very much low, but uh, they are, um, uh, their effect is too high. For example, um, uh, uh, nitrous oxide, uh, methane, uh, which is very much, uh, very much constant during last couple of uh, uh, hundred and thousand years, uh, but it has been now recently increasing about one half of 1% per year. So this is huge. Uh, and how, how does we get the methane? So most of the methane are coming from the breakdown of the plant materials uh, through different types of bacteria and other types of microorganisms in uh, mostly in rice, uh, rice cultivation. We can also get it uh, from wet oxygen poor soil uh, where uh, oxygen is uh, absent, mostly absent in there. And also the biological activity of termites, different types of termites, they can also give you the um, methane components and obviously from our um, different house, uh, types of uh, uh, domestic animals they they have also uh, those also giving us the methane production uh, with in, inside their stomach uh, so that's that can also added a sufficient amount of the uh, greenhouse uh, gases uh, into the atmosphere besides that uh, there are some other gases such as we discussed nitrous oxide so nitrous oxide is also important, uh, important greenhouse gases. And this can be also formed from the soil through a chemical process involving bacteria and certain microbes. Uh, but uh, we say nitrous oxide as uh, commonly we know as a, it is a laughing gas. And this is also important for our uh, heat trapping uh, inside the atmosphere. Uh, and so, uh, sometimes it can also be destroyed through by ultraviolet light. But again, the ultraviolet light have passing through the uh, stratosphere ozone layer and ozone layer, if they don't allow, so ultraviolet cannot come here and they cannot also destroy the uh, nitrous uh, oxide uh, inside the atmosphere. Another important thing is chlorofluorocarbons, uh, CFCS normally do represents a group of greenhouse gases, which is very much active uh, inside, the, inside the atmosphere. So, CFCS, uh, chlorofluorocarbons, actually working in two two different ways. One is they, uh, they they have a very great influence to heat trapping. This is one thing. Another thing, they also working to deplete the ozone layer in the stratosphere. So that's why it was much more important for the human beings rather than the other types of gases. Although the concentration is very much low. Uh, so, so what happened? The chlorofluorocarbon gas has mostly, uh, mostly uh, was used in uh, uh, in the propellants in spray cans, and today we also uh, there are many other uses also such as refrigerants, 
uh, that means they can cool down they can have cool down their uh, position uh, the uh, the system of any 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 type of machine and as a propellant for the blowing of the plastic foam insulation and as solvents for cleaning electro electronic micro circuits they can also use uh, chlorofluorocarbons so but nowadays it has been almost banned throughout the world and after the um, after after some of the uh, uh, convention and particular particular type of uh, ratification uh, the carbon chlorofluorocarbon gas uh, has been uh, stopped to use uh, use for the uh, different purposes but it's it, it is very important because these gases uh, one in, in one way they can help us um, not help us they can destroy the uh, destroy the gases of the ozone in the stratosphere which is uh, after the troposphere and another way they can also be uh, a heat trap uh, create some heat trapping positions in the lower atmosphere but most of the chlorofluorocarbon has been found within the uh, within the uh, stratosphere which has been started after 12 uh, kilometer that means after troposphere and about 97 percent atmospheric ozone is in there and they can they can a good source uh, to be uh, to be ozone layer and uh, in the ozone layer they, they can have a, a good source in there so ozone and chlorofluorocarbon has has up, uh, has some impacts on the uh, on the stratosphere. So ozone is a gas which can protect the which can protect the ultraviolet ray from the sun, and ozone can retain it. So ozone ozone gas is much more um, important gas in the stratosphere, so that the uh, so that the harmful uh, uh, sun rays that cannot come to the earth surface. So this is an, a, another thing. So when chlorofluorocarbon gas uh, enter into the ozone layer, they have the capacity to break down the ozone. That means O3, which is much more established gas, they can be uh, break down uh, by the CFCs and uh, they can be segmented to uh, oxygen, um, uh, oxygen atom. And then they can also uh, find out O2 plus O. And this O is, a, uh, is uh, some source of we, we can say diamond oxygen or we can say this is a free radical they can also react with um, with with uh, again the chlorine and they form cl uh, chlorine uh, 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 to come together and they form clo and they can also again impact on the ozone ozone o3 and they can again break down it so through the breakdown of the ozone they can uh, they uh, they segmented oxygen and uh, oxygen atom and then oxygen uh, sorry oxygen uh, molecule and then uh, oxygen and particularly those uh, ozone which has been formed before they lose their capacity to uh, to uh, protect the ultraviolet ray from the sun uh, how we can know that uh, we, we have already known the, these things uh, the, because we have some uh, uh, experience uh, and experiments in in different areas throughout the world one such example is that has been created in the in the antarctica we have found that in September and October, there is, uh, we observed there are some holes of the ozone on the top of the Antarctica. So hole means it is open up. Hole means there is no ozone in there. And from that hole, the uh, sun rays can come directly without any uh, filtration, without any, uh, with the mix of all sorts of rays. That means with the include, inclusion of the ultraviolet rays also. If you see these uh, photographs, this is the positions um, uh, which has been observed in the uh, in the southern hemisphere. You can see this is in the southern hemisphere, top of the southern hemisphere, and the blue green color that means they have much more less amount of the uh, ozone in this area. In this area, and and this has been measured with the with a unit which is named after a scientist, Dobson. So we said this is a Dobson unit, and a Dobson unit, unit is a physical thickness of the ozone layer. Uh, if it were brought to the Earth's surface, uh, where 500 Dobson unit equals to five millimeters, that means they can be the concentration of that particular things would be five millimeters, which we termed as a 500 Dobson units. So Dob Dobson units also help us to understand the how much ozone layer depletion can be found throughout the world. And throughout the world, we can measure it and we can also understand it where there is maximum ozone, uh, ozone hole can be found. 
and which is the right time to find that things. So most of the cases we found it throughout the world during the time of the spring time and most of the cases it has been found by the southern hemisphere, some particular southern uh, hemisphere at the, at the last and then a few areas of the Australia, New Zealand and actually throughout the world also. But these are the areas are much more prone to uh, prone to air. But Antarctica, although there is uh, there is no human beings living in here, but Australia, New Zealand, the couple of uh, countries, they are much more prone to uh, uh, ultraviolet ray because of the less amount of the ozone in the uh, stratosphere. Besides this, there are a few other gases which are also very important for our atmospheric concentration. Uh, they, those gases, we can also say these gases are impurities uh, or we can say sometimes there are some aerosols in the atmosphere. And these impurities are coming from different natural phenomena also, such as uh, we, they can also found from the uh, different sets of uh, uh, volcanic eruptions. And volcanic eruptions also gives us some particles of uh, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and also water vapor. And impurities uh, are coming from in both the way. It, this is a natural sources where you can find out. And there are some other sorts of artificial way. They, are, they also mix up with the, uh, into the atmosphere. So both together, wind picks up this dust and soil from the earth's surface and carries it a long, long distance uh, away. Uh, sufficient amount of these salt particles also coming from the ocean. And all together, they mix up particles which can be suspended in the air. As we say, suspended material, uh, suspended particles, uh, SPM, suspended particulate matter. We can say suspended particulate matters uh, in uh, from them. And these suspended particulate matters is also very much harmful to, for our health. And that can also be an important factor for uh, uh, topospheric um, uh, topospheric heat concentration, or they can also trap the heat because if you have such kind of uh, such kind of volcanic eruption for example in a particular locality they can also trigger a cool environment because they don't allow any type of sunlight through this type of volcanic eruptions so the area which is covered up with this type of gases and ashes they are they will be for uh, for the time being of that locality uh, may not be um, may not be uh, in, a, in, a, in a positions to have the sunlight from the sun. So in, in, in that particular area, maybe that will be cooled down due to less amount of the sunlight uh, penetrated in, in the ground. So aerosols are very important, uh, important uh, particles, which is uh, a, a one of the major components of the, uh, of the uh, atmosphere. Similarly, we can also, also some natural impurities you can found also uh, through the atmosphere. Uh, and these particles, which is very much important, they can also be have very good amount of uh, good amount of the uh, different uh, uh, negative impacts on our health and uh, and for particular uh, different components of the of the environment. And thus, we we, we say these are the uh, these are the particles which we termed as pollutants. For example, uh, here are some examples that automobile engines they emit uh, uh, a good amount of the nitrous oxide, carbon monoxide hydrocarbons inside the atmosphere. Uh, although in sunlight, uh, uh, nitrous oxide reacts with the hydrocarbon and other gases to produce ozone, but another way, carbon monoxide is a major pollutant of the city areas. So these are the pollutant areas is also a good uh, amount of the pollutants that can mix up in the atmosphere and they are the constituents of the atmosphere. But most of the cases, they are, uh, they are remaining at the lower atmosphere rather than they can go very top of the atmosphere because of their concentration, because of their uh, diameter and weight. So I think this is all about, I am, <laughs> I am very sorry about the time, time frame. So in the next class, we're gonna discuss about few of the uh, um, other planets which have different sets of atmosphere. Maybe that would be the last class of this chapter. So now if you have any question, just quickly uh, ask, ask me please. Hello, do you have any question? No, sir. Can you understand what I discussed today? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, okay, thank you.
So I ask, uh, can I ask um, uh, Siam that you can send me the absent roll numbers later? Okay, sir. Can I send you in Google Classroom, sir? Anywhere, anywhere, wherever you like. Okay, sir. I am sending you immediately, sir. Okay, so thank you for joining me and hopefully we'll be in the same uh, same class in the next um, uh, sun, uh, Monday, yeah? Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So thank you all for joining me and we'll see you in the next class again. Thank you. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Welcome, sir.